So Notion has been on a clean up spree, simplifying navigation while enhancing functionality. This is clear from the recent updates to team spaces, shared and private spaces on the side panel. In this video, I will highlight nine plus new features, each designed to either simplify your experience or enhance functionality. Let's talk search. Now Notion seems to have completely redesigned their search from the ground up. You can access the same with the command plus F shortcut. With these changes, the results seem more accurate and it allows for searching within toggles, inside the name property, inside of databases, and inside comments. And if you have multiple search results, you can move between the search results with the arrow keys. And it seems to remember which spot each search result has. And our search also includes AI. So you can ask for information from the current page and it will quickly give you answers, just like ChatGPT. And now not only can you search, you can also replace text in bulk for mistakes. And accessing it is pretty easy. You just click on the replace icon when you use the command plus F function. Now Notion has introduced two new formulae, pad start and pad end. And I'm really excited for this one. Now these formulae help you keep a string to a specific length by padding characters either to the beginning or to the end. For example, you can turn the number five into 0005 if a four character length is required. I created a fun little formula using pad start, which you will love. Now let's look at the pad start syntax first. The pad end one is quite similar. It has three parts. The first part is the string to which you want to make changes. The second part is the target length of the end result. And the third part is what do you want to add? So you might be wondering, why do I even need this? And that's why I'm showcasing this example, which you can use in your own database. Now for any given date, we want the day of the week and the dot to indicate that day of the week. I use this for example in my video ideas database to quickly know what day of the week the YouTuber has published that specific video or to understand which day of the week this YouTuber regularly publishes videos. Notice here that there are two rows, one showing the days of the week from Sunday to Saturday and the next row which shows just the dot. Let's open the formula. What we want for the first row is a string which says S, M and so on till S, but it's separated by a space. I just wanted to highlight, so that's a total of 13 characters, seven days and six spaces in between. Now we want the dot to go into the next line. To make that happen, we're going to be using a regex command slash n that tells Notion to go to the next line. Now notice here that I have introduced a style now this style is a code style rendering, which is what we're going to go in for. Now let's try to understand the variable part of the formula. You can find out the day of the week from the date by using the syntax day of date. Now notice here that the Sunday is the nearest to the left and Saturday is to the extreme right. The day date value for Sunday is seven and for Saturday it's six. Monday through Friday is one to five respectively. So using that understanding, let's draft out a multiple if statement. So we'll use ifs. The if syntax is if condition true and the last part is false. Now, since this is multiple ifs, you can keep adding conditions and true statements as many times as you want. And the last one after the comma is the false part, get it? Now the first if statement that we want is if the day of the week is a Sunday, then we add a dot and then the rest is all spaces. In order to do this, we need two pad start statements. One that has the dot with the total number of characters and a space at the end. We're going to style all of this as a code style, giving it a similar vibe to the first row. Notice here that the number of characters in the Sunday if statement has one inside pad start. So the second part with the blanks will have 12 characters left, 13 minus one. For Saturday, that's to the extreme right, the day is six. And since we're pushing the dots to the extreme right, that's 13 spaces. There's no second pad start statement. 
we will continue with this logic for the rest of the days. And this is what we get. So I've added comments to the formula so that you can see what's going on. Now we want to test it. Let's make sure that we have a series of dates that have all the days of the week from Sunday to Saturday and make sure that the blocks are drawn out correctly. Let's talk preview tabs. If you have multiple tabs open on your desktop app, you can quickly see a page preview when you hover the mouse over it. Now, if that's the page that you're looking for, just click on it as usual. But if that's not the tab you're looking for, move on to the next tab. Notion made a small change to the suggest edit and comments. If you work as a team often, there are multiple people who would access and edit the same document. And you would find those people leaving comments and some even suggesting changes with this new suggest edit feature from Notion. In order to make things simpler and easier, Notion has grouped both of these blocks into one space. And that makes it easy to read. So you can resolve comments and suggest edits in one single inbox. Now, while on the topic of comments, did you know, and this is a really nice feature, that you can now comment on different properties inside of the database. So you can add context and collaborate with each other on these specific property values. And even if you work alone, it's brilliant. Notion made changes to the database view options. It looks like Notion is likely to make a number of changes to the databases going forward. And we know that charts is just around the corner. So when you click on this ellipsis to bring up the view options for the database, inside of that, you will find a new section called Customize Database Settings. You'll find that the options itself have become shorter. But if you click on that, you will find all of that stuff has moved and several of the existing navigation and customization options are now inside this. At the top of the list, you will find a list of suggested properties to add. Now sub items or subtasks as we know it now resides here as well. You can add dependencies from here. The tasks option to add stuff directly into Notion Home is also here. Adding an AI summary to pull up the summary of the underlying page is also here. If you click on the see all features option, you can see all the other AI properties like translation of pages, keywords, and custom autofills. And then of course, they've added in these integrations to pages and databases like Figma, Zendesk, and Google Drive. Notion toggles now have headers. So if you hit the slash button on the keyboard to bring up the Notion main menu, under the advanced block options, you will now find three toggles header types. And to announce it, Notion had just advertised this as a Venn diagram, showing headings, toggles coming together as toggle headings. With this, you can add toggles as headings, and under that, you can house text, bullet points, checklists, and much, much more. And you can also change any of your existing text into a toggle heading with the turn into option. Now, from my side, I would definitely like to see similar changes to the call out block. That would be fun. Now, Notion AI also got a refresh. Their decision to work with ChatGPT 4.0 is really exciting as we have now exciting new features that are coming to OpenAI, like the new one, Search GPT. With this integration, Notion AI added the ability to work with images. And its focus on Notion content is possibly really crucial for its success. You want to draw on information from right within Notion, not some external generic stuff alone. Now Notion has introduced a new integration into Notion AI right from the sidebar. And this gives you a full page distraction free space for brainstorming of asking questions within Notion and even in Slack. Now this is very familiar to ChatGPT's page where the history is stored and you can generate images as well that you can use. Now you can generate drafts straight from here and they've promised future integrations with Google Drive and GitHub too. Now they've also added some one-click AI skills, which is very interesting. You can access that from right within the Q&A beta icon on the bottom right. Now this will help you summarize notes, translate content, and even create flowcharts, which we covered earlier. But I use something called a Stream Deck for my day-to-day -day Notion AI tasks. And it already has lots of these one-click options. So these updates don't really change much for me, but I do find the results from GPT-4.0 much more compelling to see what 
Notion is introducing this summer. Watch this video and to see 28 new Notion tips to transform your workspace different from this one. Watch this video.